possibilities. Camaraderie. Home. In 1968, many of us came to Essex because there was a bold movement that we wanted to be part of. And that bold movement was people could gain access to higher education without judging their previous experience. And so those who came in the earlier years wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And once they got here, they realized that this was also an environment that was nurturing, very familial. Not only did we care about the students, but we cared about each other and each other's families. And with that combination, there was no better place to stay and work than ECC. And so we stayed, some of us, 20, 30, 40 years. And some, I'm sure, are still here who are going to their 44th year. And in talking to some of them on the side, they've said to me, they will stay and they will have to be carried out of this institution. I started here in 1969 as an art adjunct and I was thrilled with teaching on a college level. So um, I was agitating to become a full-time instructor and sure enough when the position opened up they offered it to me and I jumped at the chance and as the old saying goes I've never looked back. Well of course that's not true because I have looked back. And it's like when I think about those early days, we, the art department, was at 842 Broad Street. And um, we were in this little nasty ratty building that was a two-story walk up and it had no windows. And yet we managed, we created our art major program. We gave them the courses that they needed and we felt like we were doing something good. Uh, it's like as a teacher, Every morning, it doesn't matter how bad you feel, what kind of a night you've had, whether you're tired or achy, no. You have a purpose, and it's a solemn, sacred purpose. You have to get up, and you have to be there for your students at 8.30 in the morning. And even if it's snowing or raining, you know those students are gonna be there, so you better be there. And what you do and say every single day is going to change their lives and make them better. Uh, well, Essex is a very exciting place because of its constant change. New students every year, new personalities, new programs, new challenges. And as we move from year to year, we find that we have new technologies coming out. I, I'm very proud of the fact I brought the first Mac, Macintosh, when it was a little computer like that. And now, look at where we are in technology here at the institution. We're about, uh, through Dr. Gibson's leadership, to move into their online uh, segment and reach constituencies that we hadn't reached before through an online program. So the newness, and then of course, the students give you a, an energy uh, as they come. I have learned from my students, there's a, a exciting new program on uh, computer tutorials and capture. My student discovered it for me and taught me. And if God gives me health, I will stay here forever. <laughs> Magical. Brilliance. Awesome. It's hard to believe that in the fall, uh, I've been here, I guess, coming on 39 years. And uh, hard also to believe that when I first started working here, it was at 31 Clinton Street, and I came in as a part-time intern. I was still in college, and uh, I guess it wouldn't be, you know, uh, far-fetched to say it definitely opened up a whole new world to me. Once you work here for some period of time, you sort of I don't know how to describe but there's kind of a rhythm. There's kind of a, um, a feeling, a sense, a spirit to the place. And you get caught up in that spirit. 
and you get, again, you get caught up with the direct relationship that you have with so many people that work here, and you begin to understand how all those folks and what they do all contribute to what happens at the college, and then you become part of that. And as, as part of that, you become very proud that you are a member of the ECC um, staff. It's a challenge each time I get to try something new. The great challenge then is students that I had in the earlier days are now sending their children, their grandchildren, and they come in and say, remember me? And I try my best to remember them, but the gray hair allows me to get old and forgetful. <laughs> then they had dark hair and were smaller then too, and they remind me. It's the people, the challenges to see Essex grow, the move from 31 Clinton to the megastructure, the change in the megastructure, the opportunity to make all of the corrections we forgot in the library, to renovate it, oh, several years ago, and to put those renovations that we know we needed into effect, and now I know some more that we need. And it, it's just been an absolutely wonderful experience. I learned of Essex at, while a graduate student at Seton Hall University, and I had the privilege of having classmates, Luis Salgado um, and uh, Frank Morales, who was the director of uh, bilingual studies. They encouraged me, or oh, Larry Knapp was another faculty member of Essex, who was taking, were taking courses at, at Seton Hall, and we became friends, and they were, they just told me about this place, and of course, learning about the charter system and learning about the, the emergence of community colleges. It was a very exciting time, and I want to be a part of that. And I came, I did adjunct work here uh, at the college for one semester, and I just was enamored with the environment, the stimulation, and meeting other young faculty members here, former urban fellows and students that had worked their way up through the system. All these individuals that were so, indiv so committed to this institution, and it was, this excitement was just contagious, I should say. The atmosphere is still one of uh, wanting to make change a positive change, not to slip back, but to slip forward. And I want to be a part of that. I have records going back to 1968. And I came across the People's Council, a 10-point manifesto that I participated in writing as a student along with several other students and members of the faculty. And so much of what Essex County College has now that I think that people take for granted began on January the 8th, 1970 in a 10 point manifesto that was written by the People's Council. For example, we demanded as one of those 10 points that Essex County College delegate $50,000 to develop a daycare center. It was many years from 1970 before we got a daycare center, but now we have a daycare center. What's also in this manifesto is that we mandated that students be allowed to graduate with 60 credits because there, back in those days there was some question about whether or not you could graduate with 60 to 63 credits if your degree required it. We also required that we have greater accountability as related to advisement and transferability. This was in 1970, part of the 10 manifestos, uh, the 10 points, and now we look at a viable transfer program, articulation program. Um, we also demanded that we have faculty representation to the Board of Trustees and student representation. That came many years later, but we have it. And far more important than anything else is that we demanded that those individuals who are not faculty be allowed to organize a union and not be intimidated. So now we have people, unions throughout the entire college. My point is that I want people to understand also in the manifesto, we demanded that Essex County College remain in Newark and not be built in Verona so that we could have open access. That, in fact, happened. And uh, there are just so many things uh, as a part of that 10-point manifesto. We didn't see those things happen for many years. I graduated from Essex and went on to did other things in my life before I came back to Essex. And when I came back, some of the things that we demanded in that manifesto were just beginning to percolate. Now I look at the new leadership, the young people that are here at the college now, that are leading the institution into the next era, and so much of what they're standing on came from this manifesto. So I'm just simply saying we had a sense of mission, and I think we stayed because we had a sense of mission. 
and it is my hope that the young people that are moving us to the next level, that they catch on to the mission and they go forward with it too. Because Essex is an institution that affects generations. It's not about just the student that you are dealing with today or the decision you're making today. That decision will reverberate for generations and I think this manifesto proves it. In life, it's a good thing to feel that somehow or another your life is more than just you. Essex has been a good, good place to be and some of us are leaving and phasing out, but um, I think that we have handed the institution over to a good group. I mean, I get a big kick out of the young people that are rushing around, they're just so busy, busy, busy. But I get a good kick out of it, you know, I love to see them doing things, I love to see them taking us to another level. Loyalty. Opportunity. Purpose. You know, I saw that the staff and the faculty were really on a mission. They, they seemed like they really wanted to, to serve the community. You know, sort of like a moral purpose for, for being here. And that was quite invigorating for me. And there were many opportunities uh, here at the college which I was able to take advantage of. You know, I moved from uh, teaching remedial courses to uh, teaching mathematics to teaching computer science. And now in my current position as the, the acting dean of STEM, so, you know, I guess if I had to give a message to the new faculty members, you know, we want to preserve those glory days that uh, we had in a not too distant past. And what I find really uh, exciting is that I've had the ability to teach siblings, I've had the ability to teach sons and daughters and mothers and daughters, and even mothers, daughters, and sons-in-law who's who have actually come back and said that this is where they got their start at Essex County College. And because of that start, they have been able to become upperly mobile. And as the student becomes up upperly mobile, their families become upperly mobile, and then the community as a whole is able to benefit from this upward mobility. So I just continue to find this exciting. It, it's what makes me, again, want to be here uh, as much as I am. And my family, of course, says a little too much, but it's never too much when you're doing something that you actually love. We come because we've learned to love the students. We come because we have a passion and the expectations for what we envision our students to have and to be about. With our students, a lot of them have not experienced success, yeah. you know, and what we do is we have so many things to offer them at the stage at which they are that once they understand it, understand what the tools are, how hard they have to work to put themselves in position to take advantage of opportunities as they come to them, especially with our athletes, yeah. but we show them the importance of hard work. This is why we come here every day. It's not about me, it's not about Mel. Right. It's about the student. And if you wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to take care of the student, then you can come in here with a smile on your face. Because at the very end, Essex County College is the place to be. And I've been very good to Essex, but Essex has been very good to me also. Challenges. Dynamic. Transformational. The combination of different native countries, a combination of backgrounds, a combination of desires for education, people want to go into different fields. And when they're all put together, they start to do special things. We talk in class about how as you have atoms and molecules and as things build, the sums greater than the, the parts. The same is true here where the students individually are good. And like any school, you've got a mix of good students, not so good students, and those. But when you put them together, they act differently. When you put them together, all of a sudden, they start to work with each other. They start to teach each other to the part where you almost become a facilitator. They know what to do, they learn from each other, and now that we have um, web access and we have internet access and everybody's got some sort of electronic device or knows someone with one, 
they stay contacted outside of class. So now I find additional office hours, I'll be answering questions on weekends or overnight because three or four of them are in a study group somewhere and they came up with a question and so they'll send me the questions. And because they can do this, they create a dynamic that you don't see in a lot of schools where they develop friendships, they develop working relationships, and these relationships tend to go on even as they leave here and they go other places, they maintain those relationships. And it makes working here actually a joy. It's a pleasure coming in in the morning, walking into class and seeing them there, even on their bad days, where you're helping them with things or they're helping each other with things. And on the good days, it's just wonderful to be there. I started working at Essex County College in 1995 at West Caldwell at night as an adjunct at CIS department. And I was always working at corporate America during the daytime in IT field. Until I get the opportunity to, off, to, to offer an uh, IT job at Essex County College, I was working at Verizon at that time in a network repair bureau. So I was like very comfortable at Verizon, but when I hear about the Essex County College opportunities, I said, okay, you know what? I have to decide whether I stay with Verizon or I take Essex County College. So it was Verizon versus Essex County College. Who's gonna win? But really, my dedication to Essex County College and how, how I feel that I need to serve this college more and more I decided to take Essex County College IT job over Verizon, and I'm very happy that I did make this. I made this decision because if I can work here for the rest of my life, I would to serve Essex County College, the president, and everybody else in the campus. One of the things I enjoy about coming to work is helping people, getting to know all the people I've helped. People know me, some of them I don't know, but helping them is, is one of the best things I've done, and also the students. I, uh, I've been very fortunate. I have also become the president of SSA, and which is extremely exciting because that also helps people, right? And now things have changed in the college. We have got rid of the old regime, and now we're moving into a new era with new president, new personnel, new everything, which opportunities also have become greater. So I think the college is looking up and things are getting much, much brighter. I love ECC. I mean, it, I wake up every morning excited to come to work. Um, I love what I get to do with my students. I love the fact that, you know, sometimes a student will walk up to me, sometimes two or three years later, and they'll say, you know, something that happened in, in class really changed the way I looked at something. I mean, the scholarship, the ability to work with young people, to get their minds going, to get them thinking about what's exciting. And also, I learn a lot from my students because my students come with such a great perspective. They always are so open about their experiences and we get to you know, piggyback on each other and dovetail, and it's an outstanding learning environment. So I love it here because of the scholarship, but I also love it because ECC is, is like home. It's, a, it's like a family. I love the people I work with. You know, we are a nurturing, loving, caring, supportive institution, and I really feel like I belong here, like I'm family. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of leaving. This is my last job. I'm going to be here till, till I retire. Relevant. Renewal. Privilege. I think about the sacrifices that others made for not only for me to be here, but for all of us to be here. That this place evolved out of the 60s, the struggles of, of transforming realities, and People died for us to be here, died for us to be able to have the opportunity to get an education. The sacrifices of my parents, my grandparents, they made a sacrifice for me to be able to succeed in the face of opposition. And so here at Essex, it's, it was magical because I could do things not just for myself, but for the community. This is a community college. 
So we're in the community. I see myself as someone who's not just here on this campus, but is in all of the surrounding community doing things to transform lives of young folks. See, greatness is at our fingertips. All we have to do is reach out and grab it. As a member of Human Resources, I have influence, not in necessarily direct involvement and impact with the students, but indirect by ensuring that the employees that we maintain, that we attract and we retain, can do have the skill set needed and we can develop those skill sets that are needed to serve our primary clients, our students. And with that, I enjoy. There's a student, his name is Michael, and his father also has the same name. He was a junior, and his father was a student here years ago. And he came to me because their AccuPlacer scores, their test scores were mixed up. He actually had his father's test scores. So I was working in the dean's office at the time, and of course, they fix everything everywhere. So he came to see me. We were able to work it out, but we developed a relationship. Every semester, he would come back and he would say, I need help with my schedule, I need help with financial aid. Whatever it was, we were able to help him out. Every semester, something happened. He dropped a class, he didn't do well. He just had problems over the years, and then finally, um, I lost track of him when I left the Dean's office and I went to the Senior Vice President's office. He saw me in the hallway one day and he stopped me and he said, I've been looking for you. He said, you're the one who's been helping me all these years and I finally got it together. He said, I'm a straight A student this semester. I plan on transferring. I'm going to get my PhD when I finish, my baccalaureate degree, my master's. So I really knew that I impacted that student. Not only him, but his father, because his father was continuing and he was going to come back to Essex. So just little things like that let you know that your day-to-day -day things are making a difference. So that really, really was a great, um, it was confirmation that what we're doing works and what we're doing makes a difference. So that's why I stay. In 2008, I started adjuncting at uh, ECC in the communications program, and I was just so bowled over uh, with uh, the program itself with uh, the staff at media, the Media Production Technology uh, Center and uh, especially with the students. That's really what uh, impressed me the most about ECC as an adjunct uh, was the dedication, the hard work, the creativity, the just brilliance of our students really made me want to come back uh, to ECC and work here full-time. So I did do that. I did apply for a full-time position here and uh, now I'm just really excited to be working with uh, not just communication students but new media technology students who are doing some amazing things with game design and applications and just really creative, um, brilliant work. Uh, and also working with uh, some of the digital media students. So it's really the brilliance, the creativity, and the just, you know, hardworking and frankly fun <laughs> part of this job that I really love because it's, it's all about the students. Our students really bring so much to the classroom and that's what keeps me coming back day after day and here on summers, you know, on my time off to come in and teach classes. There's a certain level of energy that makes me get up at 4.30 every morning and I get here at 6.25 because it's just exciting. There's energy, there's such diversity um, in the faculty, diversity in the students, um, and it's the opportunities. I think that Essex is a gem and I think it's the place to be. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be any place else.